I'm spiritual. I'm not religious. Jesus hated religion. I'm like Jesus. I don't need to go to church. I have a personal relationship with God. Relationship over religion. Stop it. Why do Christians say these things? Uh, well, it's because they're moist. I just turn you over just a little bit. Yep. Okay. One of my favorite things to say is define your terms. More of a demand, really. What do people mean by religious? What is religion? When people reject religiousness or religion in favor of the label spirituality or spiritual, they imply religious means being primarily concerned with outward trappings, which ironically ends up being exactly what they're doing. Because these kinds of Christians are the kinds of Christians who deem themselves progressive. The belief that one's religious performance or adherence to rules and rituals are in fact what is necessary for the attainment of salvation or to achieve a true holiness, righteousness, genuine faith. It is the appearance of spirituality rather than the actual spiritual depth and beauty and truth. The secular perception of religion, which is all too often adopted, or if you came to Christ later in life, retained by Christians, is that much of the evil that has and is plaguing the world is the fault of ideologies and doctrines of religion, particularly, if not almost <laughs> exclusively, Christian ideologies and doctrines. For many Christians, the label of being spiritual but not religious is an attempt to break away from that perception. It is to appease the secular anti-religion crowd in a cowardly, feeble attempt to set themselves apart from the institution of the church, to become more acceptable to the world rather than to God. Weak, moist Christians, many of whom will contend still that they are truly Christians, that they really they really do believe in Christ. They really do love Jesus. Yet they abandon church fellowship and community, ultimately abandoning accountability. So you, you profess that you are a Christian, that you love Christ, that you believe in God, then reject accountability for you actually upholding that belief, that profession. And that's what it really comes down to more often than not. It is rejecting accountability for living lives that truly are set apart, holy living, living in submission to the transformational power of the Holy Spirit, apparently abiding in such Christians. Unfortunately, this desire to be spiritual but not religious does not bring people closer to God. It takes you further away, and it misrepresents who and what the church is. Christians who use this phrase, spiritual, not religious, are trying to accommodate their faith to secular critics. Critics who see religion as merely a means for mass control, or this ancient, old, dusty belief system that, I don't know, patriarchy, or that keeps you from living your best life. The so-called spirituality that satisfies the secular world is distant from the gospel. Therefore, Christians ought to reject such a foolish temptation as to be religionless in your spirituality. This worldview is contrary to the teachings of Jesus. 
Jesus, who requires us to deny ourselves, to seek to lose our lives, that we may gain it and have it more abundantly in him. Christian spirituality is self-sacrifice. Secular spirituality is self-preservation. Secular spirituality also rejects community and accountability. Accountability is a foreign concept in the world and apparently in the church. Because no one likes being judged and or criticised for doing things that make them momentarily happy. Christians are called to edify and to build up one another. Hence the necessity of strongly Bible-centred fellowship, which is what we're supposed to find in church. It's not a matter of preference. It is essential for the Christian who is seeking to deepen his relationship with God. There are two legalistic extremes in Christianity. One focuses on law over love and grace, and one that sees itself as progressive, focusing on love over law and or obedience. Like the former, the latter, those progressive types, will, for example, praise themselves for being so open-minded Often that open-minded spirituality is merely for the sake of being different or distinct from mainline Christianity. Why? Again, to be more acceptable to the world as opposed to God. Merely having an open mind is nothing. The object of opening the mind as of opening the mouth is to shut it again on something solid. The focus is not on serving God then. It's on being super cool and different and, you know, intellectually and morally superior because, you know, we're doing away with the old ancient patriarchy. Ridiculous people. Look, basically, the claim to be spiritual but not religious makes life less controversial. That's the appeal. Some Christians don't want to be discriminated against whether professionally or socially. And so they kind of just, you know, maybe they have the right beliefs privately, but it means nothing if you aren't consistent with that publicly. Like if you privately adhere to the traditional view of marriage, but publicly you wouldn't dare defend marriage. The thing is, as a Christian, like an actual Christian, you're going to be discriminated against. Blessed are you. Christianity is unique and distinguished from self-chosen forms of spirituality because its origin is in divine revelation. It is God's gift for us. The purpose or meaning of religion being religious, as a Christian at least, is to reconnect with God. That's the gospel. The gospel is about reconnecting. God wills to call people into communion with him. The church is a work of God. The communion God desires to share with us in heaven begins here on earth as the church. So we have one type of religion that is comprised of that which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. This is based on false gods and worldly philosophy, progressive Christianity. And the other type of religion which relies heavily on ceremony, rules and rituals, or rule keeping, with the intent of currying favour with God. The scribes and Pharisees in the Bible are an example of this. Jesus said they like to walk around in flowing robes and love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and have the most important seats in the synagogues and the places of honour at the banquets. They devour widows' houses and, for a show, make lengthy prayers. These men will be punished most severely. Their religion was outward and heavily influenced by their traditions. Whitewashed tombs, appearing clean and pure, but inside, 
corrupt. If you prefer to make your own rules, to live by your own truth, why are you pretending to be affiliated with Christ? Why do you hold on to that label? Because it is just a label to you. Such a person is, at best, an uncommitted Christian. At worst, a heretic. What is being religious in a true sense? A parallel to how scripture views terms like religion and religious could be terms like politics or political. Politics is how culture translates moral and ethical beliefs into law and the government. A person can be political or religious while maintaining a sense that political or religious parties, laws, elected officials are not the most important thing. They're not the be all and end all. They are a means to an end. They are not the end themselves. A person who finds his fundamental meaning and purpose in the mechanics of politics isn't so much political or religious as unbalanced. He misplaces his priorities. Religion in the same way can be warped. Biblical Christianity posits an ultimate purpose behind and beyond the characteristics that define religion. Those details matter, but they are not faith in its entirety. This was a key aspect of Christ's teaching. He routinely scolded the religious leaders of his era. Their priorities were misplaced. Rituals, prayers, whatever lived aspects of faith becoming gods unto themselves is the kind of religion scripture speaks against. By itself, religion is a neutral term. Religion that is acceptable to God is to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep one's self unstained from the world. True religion in God's eyes makes a difference to who we are and what we do. It is a religion that is based on relationship. It is not a relationship apart from religion or religiousness. Religion is first of all a response to God's revelation because God clearly reveals or revealed himself in creation. Richard Dawkins spends m much of his time and career uh, fighting against the creator he doesn't believe exists. And he holds this cause with great devotion and faith. Atheists themselves have a worldview, they have a set of beliefs. Evolutionists often argue that religion is a part of some evolutionary accident. Dawkins states this in his book, The God Delusion. Religious behavior may be a misfiring, an unfortunate byproduct of an underlying psychological propensity which, in other circumstances, is, or once was, useful. For the evolutionist, religion evolved in the mind of man. The obvious problem with this is that it's based on an evolutionary view of history. The Bible, however, reverses this idea. In Genesis, we learn the origin of time, space, matter, civilization, sin, marriage, name it, favorite book. It also speaks of the origin of religion. The origin of religion begins in Eden. God clearly reveals himself to Adam. Adam and Eve, however, reject this revelation and they choose instead to believe a falsehood. They wanted to be gods themselves. Paul tells us, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. God has clearly revealed himself in creation. No one is excused from believing in his existence. However, because of man's fallen nature, the truth of God's revelation is suppressed. The suppression of that revelation ultimately expresses itself in idolatry. And idolatry is not merely carving a statue or making a statue or wearing a cross or whatever. It is the pursuit of anything in this world other than the glory 
of the one true God. In exchanging the truth of God's revelation for a lie, that revelation is transformed into idolatry. Religion, therefore, is a subjective response to objective divine revelation. The word religion may be used in many different contexts, but there's a difference between false and true religion. Similarly, there is a difference between religion to look religious and religion to cultivate a deeper relationship with Christ. Religion or one's religious adherence is their subjective response to objective divine revelation. And that response is either true or false. You cannot have spirituality apart from religion, nor religion apart from spirituality. Religion is for spirituality what the body is for the soul. Religion contains spirituality. Religion contextualizes it. To attempt to have one without the other is an ever-failing endeavour. My name is Christ Defender. I defend the Christian faith. I answer questions and criticisms concerning Christianity. If you like what I do and you would like to support me, there are two links in the description box. One is to Patreon if you want to support financially monthly. And the other is a link to my Teesprings account where you'll find my merch. Which you can just scroll through here and look at all this good stuff. I can't afford to buy myself samples of my own merchandise, but hey, you guys with, you know, real jobs, um, you could, and please do. Bye.